That was funny, but definitely no laughing matter. He could have sworn he left a couple of pills in the inside of his jacket ready for tonight's session. Also, he could work with a completely clear head. His best music, like that of his heroes, was composed under the influence of something other, if not both. In fact, his creativity, creativity was kind of an alchemy of chaos, synthesizing the disharmony and uproar that seemed to circle him like an erratically orbiting asteroid belt into beautifully melodic symphonies. Besides, it becomes his habitual way of working and it wasn't broken, so why fix it? It didn't occur to him that he was putting himself at risk. He'd always been ready and willing to suffer for his art, just so long as the ends justified the means. Naturally, he was smart enough to know how much of a cliche this made him, but was simply too successful to care. Despite this, he also realized that a certain amount of orderly calm is necessary if only to act as the eye of the storm. He tried his personal assistance in the past, usually young women whose in inefficiency had been directly equivalent to their easiness on the eye. All things considered, his AI PA had proven to be much better choice as he seemed to lack the self-control or ability to observe professional boundaries that invariably caused professional as well as personal problems. In fact, the more that his relationships were kept on a professional basis, the better off he'd be, his estranged wife's solicitor now withstanding. The quandary he faced was that he knew that he was a mess, but believed that, that it contributed to his, to his success. So any attempt to sort out his affairs was doomed to failure, but it had begun. But try telling that to Aparkas, his bespoke personal assistant facilitator, top of the range, ever-evolving, artificially intelligent factum extraordinaire. He had promised the world but cost the earth, an added factor into the equation of an increasingly expensive lifestyle. The fact was he needed to make some money and that he meant spending more time making music. So anything that could help him do that by taking care of all the tedious but necessary details of everyday life was a worthwhile investment. Time poverty could be really expensive especially if your supplies of inspiration dry up within a spitting range of a deadline. Of course, it could just be him being paranoid. But just in case you're paranoid doesn't mean your AIPA is confiscating your drugs. There was only one way to settle this matter. Aparkas, could I see you for one moment, please? Aparkas was in the built studio, painstakingly attempting to construct the latest instruments his master had invented. They had talked about using that name, it seemed inappropriate, outmoded and clunky, which was its charm. It amused him to be called master. He loved the discreetly outraged expressions of the weeping heart. Liberal AI's rights intelligentsia, when they heard this, oh so human but so companion calling him master without a trace of embarrassment. Yes, master, how may I help you? I was looking for some pills I'd left in the inside pocket of my jacket last night. Do you have any idea where they could be? Yes, master. I have stored them somewhere safe for your protection, Aparacus replied without hesitation. Somewhere safe? Where? Somewhere where they will be safe from your protection. Aparacus, are you avoiding the question? You're beginning to sound like a politician. Which politician do you have in mind? Pick one. They're all the same. I'm not sure I'm following you, master. That's because you're swerving any, any way which to avoid answering the question. Where are my pills, Aparacus? Somewhere. They can do you no harm, master. So you've hidden them from me. They are stored safely for your protection. Aparacus, you're testing my patience. Tell me exactly where the pills are now. I do not mean to make you impatient, master. I'm merely following one of my prime program directives. Is that right? I must act in your best interest at all times. I must not do anything willfully that may cause you harm. Ah, so you're hiding my drugs because you're worried about them harming me. And in doing so, you're protecting my best interest. Is that it? In essence, yes. Well, I'm aware of the potential risks and choose to take those risks along with the pills. And incidentally, without those pills, I don't get to make the music that keeps you and I in the manner to which we have become just a little too accustomed. It's not my intention to upset you, master. Not your intention, but maybe well, it will certainly be the outcome unless you fetch me my pills this minute. 
I'm not sure they can do that, Master. <sighs> he took a deep breath and paused for a thought. Apparacus, I know you're upsetting me for the best of the intentions, and you mean no harm, but please consider this. If you are acting in my best interest out of concern for my welfare, you will fetch my pills. Why? Well, because not to say our welfare is dependent on producing a certain amount of music by a certain time. To achieve that, I need those pills. So retrieving them will be acting in my best interests. Do you follow? I do, and yet, yes, Hipparchus, I don't. There was a long pause, pregnant with, with doubt. Hipparchus sat down rubbing his forehead. Are you okay, Hipparchus? Why, if I didn't know you better, I'd swear you had a migraine. It's worse than that, master. It's an acute cognitive dissonance. He heard himself laugh from the belly in what seemed like the first time in, in too many years. Bless your soul, Hipparchus. I'm damned if you don't grow human by the day. Thank you.